What's happening to Kings and Queens? Welcome to the new channel. I'm excited about starting this. If you're here for the first time, welcome. If you find anything that I say worth value, please share it and subscribe. This channel will expose my pains, my strengths, my weaknesses, um, my losses, but also my wins and what I do to get there to those wins. Which brings me to the point of this particular video, which is to show you my 2020 in review. What happened, the things that you didn't see posted on various social media channels and um, the things that I did and continue to do that makes me the person that I am. Some of you that know me pretty well know that I work out, I love to work out, I enjoy working out. And one thing that you did not see is this incredible shoulder pain that I had that I went through physical therapy for, for weeks. I went actually for months. I got dry needling, I got massages, I got therapeutic exercises and none of it worked. I ended up getting an MRI, which I went into this machine, I freaked out and I was like, no, I can't. As soon as I went in, I, I just told him, I said, no, get me out of here. I, this is not happening. So I kind of recognized that I had a bit of claustrophobia and I had to take some type of prescription medication to relax me in order to get me in there to make the process happen. So long story short, I got the MRI done. I went back to my sports medicine doctor. He told me everything was fine. It looks perfect. And just to let up on the heavy weight. So that's what I did. And um, it just kind of healed itself. So I also had a, over the past few years, some of you may or may not know I've had a, a life change issue. And uh, one thing that happened this year in accordance to that is I gained uh, full custody of my daughter, which I absolutely love. And that kind of changed my my year, the perspective, um, you know, my time allocations and, and things of that nature. So that's why you've probably seen more of them and why you will continue seeing more of them. I had a TV show opportunity. I turned it down, but I had one, actually a couple of them. But I am optimistic that this is the start of something that will continue to flow. And I think whatever you desire, whatever you manifest, I never wanted to be on TV, but I think that could be in my future based on people contacting me or seeing the value in what I may have to offer for whatever their network is. I also expanded my business. I continue to build and grow a business, which I will you know, kind of give you insight on that later. But I continue to build a business when other businesses were being um, you know, shut down and being downsized. And I am super grateful that my business continues to flourish during those times. So everybody knows what went on in March and my last day in the gym was March 19th. Since then, I've been working out in my garage and I am in the best shape of my life. I also helped my grown daughter, my 20 year old daughter, to get a hold of her finances and she has a significant net worth that I didn't have a net worth of even probably all when I was almost 30. So I'm super proud of her and where she's, how she's adapting to learning money, how she's adapting to investing and how she's open to um, continue her knowledge to, to be a better person when it comes to being financially responsible. Being financially responsible will take you to some incredible places because people without money, they are often at the mercy of people with money. You may have heard of this, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, plus or minus the books that you do or do not read. These are the books that I completed this year. Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo. Can't Hurt Me by David Godden. Super Fans by Pat Flynn. Social Media Marketing by Robert Miller. Manifesting Love. I don't know the author, but I was trying to manifest some stuff. Becoming Bulletproof by Evie Pomporis. The Truth About Men by Devin Franklin. The Art of War. Everybody read that, needs to read that book. Sun Tzu. Billion Dollar Habits by Robert Rink. Goals, The Ultimate Goal Setting List by Brian Tracy. That's my dude. Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. And Be the Dad She Needs You to Be by Dr. Kevin Lehman. Out of all of those, my favorite book was Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins by far. If you're not a David Goggins follower or you never heard of him, you need to latch on reading his book and following his material. I feel like it's so relatable to the way that I live life. 
and just living all of your life to the fullest. I also started artwork again. Those of you that know, I'm trying to find something that I can pick up and show you that I've drawn, but I can't. But I started my artwork back again with the time that has been afforded to me this year. I got some really interesting and really cool creative paintings that I've done. I will show them later as well. But I'm excited about that. Exercising your talent, not burying it, and being able to spark that interest and let that interest continue to go. On my main YouTube channel, I did gain or hit the 1,000 subscriber mark, which um, you start to get monetized at that point. I gotta be honest with you, I haven't been really hardcore or laser focused on it, so I'll post a video every now and then, and I dedicated myself to say that, look, I'm going to post videos more often, more frequent, and when I'm intentional about it, I will definitely grow my channel the way that I should be growing it. But to hit that thousand uh, subscribers mark without a whole lot of focus was uh, amazing. And to, I think it's evident that it shows some type of valuable content is there. People are just going there looking uh, based on search alone. So I talked about losses earlier. Um, here's one of them. My biggest loss financially was Alibaba. And I was actually winning at it, but this is something that I struggle with. One of my struggles is not, I struggle with not taking profit. I was up significantly. And at some point I should have taken profit, but I didn't. It's not a greed thing. It's not like, let me get more, let me get more. I invest for the long haul and that's what I was doing and that has led me to be currently down by 20%, which I'm, I'm cool with. It's not like the whole portfolio is fixed on that. But my biggest gain for the year is Tesla at 105%. So you look at that and you're like, gosh, I should have bought more. So um, you average it up, you divide it, and you know, you still got wins. Definitely more wins than losses. So those are my wins, those are my losses. That's my 2020 year review. I hope that you found some value in it. I do plan on letting this be the place that I will introduce um, fashion, fitness, finance, and food, right? The things that I am frequently asked about that I highly desire to help you to conquer. And I want these, this to be the house that we build based on this community. So drop me some comments and let me know what your biggest wins of 2020 were. Let me know what you're trying to achieve in 2021. And if I have the knowledge and the power to share any kind of insight of how we can get there, how I can help you to get there, how this community can assist you to get there, then let's do it. So that's my 2020. What I want to leave you with is that potential does not mean a thing unless you tap into it. This is Terrell. Until next time, be awesome. So I'm all, I'm, 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 <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be one. I could end with the um